We have an NHL trade to discuss, and this time, it's officially official. The Pens and Panthers deal is now complete, and the details were not quite as we originally had reported. Let's discuss this new trade coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have an official trade now between the Pens and the Panthers. This deal that was reportedly going down yesterday that got held up. And we heard earlier in my last video, just not very long ago at all, uh, that the deal was likely not happening. Has now resurfaced, come back to life, and is now completed in the details that were reported yesterday uh, were not exactly 100% accurate. There was actually an additional piece in there. So here are the details of the trade the pittsburgh penguins trade forward patrick hornfist who had to waive his no trade clause to make this happen he goes to the florida panthers in exchange for defenseman michael matheson who comes with that lovely six-year contract making 4.8 million dollars and the penguins also get a forward colton siever who's got under contract for one more year at 1.2 million i believe he's 31 years old so he'll be a bottom six forward uh, in pittsburgh we get Matheson, who's, like I said, a defenseman who's, I think, kind of was frustrating. Joel Quenville, I'm not like I'm not shocked that he was moved. I've mentioned on a couple of occasions, and most recently in our Florida Panthers offseason video that I just put out in the last day, that I felt he was likely going to get traded. He would be their first choice on the blue line to get moved because they wanted to shake things up back there. And, and it indeed happens. I did not think it would be Jim Rutherford being the acquiring GM, as I talked about before, like uh, when the trade was reportedly going down, um, I just I don't know what the Penguins are thinking here. There must be another move coming uh, as a result of this, which I certainly hope it is, because if there isn't, I don't really understand what Rutherford is doing. Panthers, in this case, I think win the deal. They get the best player in the trade, which is Horkfest, in my opinion. But at the same time, they get three years at $5.3 million for a player who's had his fair share of injuries even though he's going to be 34 when next season starts, his body probably feels much older than that. He's gone through quite a bit. Um, there was some concerns over some insurance issues on his contract, which apparently got worked out. Uh, he waived his no trade. Um, so, But he's a good player. He's the kind of player who goes to the front of the net, goes in the corners. Like He's hard to play against. Gritty, sandpaper, good around the, the, the players that get everybody riled up. Like He has a lot of intangibles that you can't measure that are very important uh, to a team. He scored a cup winning goal in 2017 for the Penguins over the Predators. So, you know, clearly it's like a, a great example here of a, of a great team player uh, who, uh, you know, is just getting up there. The Penguins want to get younger. They want to create some uh, a change here, obviously. Between the two contracts that they're taking on here from the Panthers, uh, they're actually going to be going up in salary cap, so there's less available. Uh, obviously, you get 1.2 to Seaver, 4.8 to Matheson, so they're taking in just over 6 to get 5.3 going out. And as I mentioned in the other video, talking about this when the reports were first coming out yesterday, they have an abundance now of left shot defensemen. So, like I said, I wonder... If something else is percolating here and it's kind of hinged on this deal happening first, like on the left side, then now not only do they have Matheson, they've got Jack Johnson. So now they have two left shot defensemen who are highly criticized for their poor defensive play. You've also got Brian Dumoulin, who's you know their, their top left shot defenseman. You've also got Yuso Rikula, You've got Marcus Pedersen. Um, so, you know, there's more than enough there. They can only play usually three in a game. So uh, it doesn't make sense to me unless some they're planning on having somebody play on their offside because they do have Latang and Marino for the right side. They got Chad Ruedel, who's probably more like a number seven defenseman, but he's also normally plays the right side. Um, I don't think Latang is going anywhere just yet. Uh, I can see him maybe being moved during the final year of his contract, which will be next year. Um, but I think with his contract uh, amount that he makes, everything is going to be too complicated. So I don't see Latang leaving this season. I guess you never know, though. Rutherford's doing some crazy things this year. But I, I would be surprised if he moved now instead of maybe a year from now or he departs via free agency when his contract's up in two years or something to that effect. But more than enough defensemen. They went up in cap. Um, yes, yeah, shaking things up is one thing, but just don't understand. I mean, they get they get a little younger. They didn't save money. I, I don't know. I mean, they're not like they get less term either. They get less term on Seaver, but not on Matheson. 
It's just a really confusing trade. I think Florida did well here. We've heard reports Florida wanted to cut salary. Um, they do do that a little bit. Obviously, they, they save about 700000 or so uh, for the one contract they're taking compared to two going out. Um, maybe that gives them a little bit of wiggle room to maybe try to keep uh, one of their UFAs. they got Mike Hoffman and Dodonoff, who are both UFAs, and it's been reported that they both may not be back because of a combination of salary cap and internal budget that they may not be able to resign. Maybe that helps them have a little extra cash to resign one of them in that regard. Um, so Florida definitely wins this deal, uh, at least for right now, in my opinion. Unless Matheson gets his game really turned around, uh, I just don't see that contract being well for Pittsburgh. You throw that in with Jack Johnson, and that's just a lot of toxic money tied up in their blue line, in my opinion. I'm not, not a fan of it from the Pittsburgh side at all, but we'll see. Like I said, I really hope for Pittsburgh and their fans' sake that there's another move coming to kind of offset this to bring in uh, something else in the blue line that's going to help. Maybe Johnson goes out and something else better comes in. I, I don't know. But that left side of their defense is going to be awfully weak if they're playing Johnson and uh, Matheson there. And said, uh, does that mean that do they try to put Pedersen on the other side? I don't see Matheson or Johnson likely switching over. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, really confusing trade, but it's now officially official. It's a done deal. Hornfist to Florida, Matheson and Seaver to Pittsburgh. We'll see what more to come. Uh, we know the Penguins are, are working on other deals as well. Matt Murray is going to go. It's just a matter of time and where. Uh, does, does he get a first-round pick in return for Murray? That's what uh, reportedly what he's looking for. Uh, you know, Jared McCann's another player who could be on the go. They're getting a lot of calls on Brian Rust as well. Not that they're actively shopping him. Uh, reports are from Josh Yohe of The Athletic that, that they're getting a lot of inquiries because of knowing that they want to shake things up. Uh, and he's on a pretty you know reasonable contract, $3.5 million dollars. Been a pretty proven goal scorer for them. Uh, he could very well be a top six, uh, you know, top two on the right side for them this year as well. So certainly creates a you know a good opportunity for him to stay you know, where they have a good valuable contract. But they're getting calls. It just depends on the deal. Um, so we'll see what happens. The Penguins team is looking a lot different. I know I've heard Josh Yohe also say that they're basically looking at things for like the next three years. Uh, while they have Sid and Malkin uh, it's still kind of somewhat in their, you know, towards the tail end of their prime here, that they're just going all in here trying to see if they can win another championship. They know in three or four years' time that they're not going to be very good because they're likely going to be having a lot of these core veteran guys that are the key parts of their success really getting older and starting to deteriorate in their play, uh, and they don't really care. They're more concerned about winning right now. I mean, obviously, some of these young players will have to step up if they want to keep things going, but... It's not going to be easy uh, in, in the Penguins uh, organization considering how uh, depleted they are when it comes to younger players and prospects to kind of be that next wave of players to take over for Crosby and Malkin and Latang, uh, you know, in the next few years' time as things start to slow down for them. So let me know what your thoughts are on this trade, and we'll discuss further down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.